For part two, let's go back to Brazil and look at some other plecos. In this habitat, there are bristlenose plecos of the genus Ancestris and Hypostomus. Here they are really common and pretty much occupy every major branch or fallen tree in the river. The black and white pattern of this pyroloricaria perfectly matches the substrate, especially combined with the interplay of the sunlight breaking the surface. This makes the fish hard to spot for predators, which are less common over these patches of sand since few fish spend time here, where large pike cichlids or salminas could easily hunt small fish in the open water. Most characins avoid these sections of the river and only fast-moving parodon and bruconops can be encountered here. This river is a famous destination for tourists, and we've made several videos about this location. Visitors floating in wetsuits along with the current may not even notice most of the captured species. Bristlenose are almost exclusively in small holes of fallen trees, and disappear on the underside or in deeper holes in the tree the moment a shadow approaches. The bristlenose plecos have tons of predators after them. Here is an anhinga smashing a bristlenose he just caught against a branch. These birds dive and hunt fish and plecos, but the bristlenose seem to be their favorite. You can see the birds stop at every major branch to check for them. The birds are well habituated and seem to be completely ignoring the humans snorkeling in their habitat while they hunt for plecos. Alongside kingfishers and herons, these birds are often seen fishing in the rapids, and it's not uncommon to see them returning to the surface with a pleco. At times it felt like this bird was actually using my movements to ambush fish when they were distracted. These dense pillows of plants not only contain fish, but large aquatic crabs that are likely welcome prey for the snake bird. Turning some of the logs reveals a huge population of bristlenose plecos, similar to Ancestris claro, one of the smaller species in the genus. With so many predators nearby, they quickly scurry back under the log. The major predator of the Ancestris are salminas. They will hunt much larger fish, often attacking brucon that are more than half their own size. But they are also really opportunistic, and when one of the branches moves, they come in and try to snatch the bristlenose plecos. I was trying to photograph the plecos, and several salminas came in and took advantage of the situation. Luckily, the ancestors are aware of their presence, and move in time to avoid the attacks of the dorado. This too seems to be learned behavior of the predators, taking advantage of the frequent visits of large mammals that distract their prey. These logs are used as markers for visitors to get their gear ready, and people often step on them with each movement an opportunity for the young salminas to try and catch easy prey. In somewhat deeper water, there are also hypostomas. This is Hypostomus basilisco, which gets a beautiful reddish-brown color and blue eyes. Like the ancestors, they are really smart at avoiding the camera while remaining in the shadow of their log. Like many places in South America, there are two hypostomus species found together here, and the red-brown basilisco occurs on wood, fallen branches and trees, while the more camouflaged pattern species seems to prefer the more modeled stone or gravel substrates. There are currently over 150 species of hypostomus, even though only a handful is commonly seen in the hobby. As algae eaters, they thrive alongside other fish or in the community aquarium, and they are the easiest of the larger plecos, which makes it odd that so few species are kept by catfish enthusiasts. This large tree is home to around 10 large adult Hypostomus basilisco of similar size. Juveniles and younger fish seem to occur in more shallow water and may live alongside the large groups of ancestors. Breeding caves of Hypostomus dug out of the clay or muddy riverbanks serve as breeding caves for swallows in the dry season. Some rivers in the Amazon lowland have banks filled with these caves, like this huge apartment complex. Other catfish, especially doradids, then also move into these habitats when the water levels begin to rise again. Upstream of this location, at the entrance of the rapids to the Rio Trombetas, we found this Picoltia. Water flow here is moderate, but the substrate is free of debris and some of the bedrock is exposed by the current. These guys are well camouflaged in this habitat as well. Let's check out the most famous pleco river, the Rio Xingu. There's no other place with such a wide variety of plecos. The zebra pleco is maybe the most famous, but the most common export is the gold nugget pleco. 
The beautiful juveniles are hard to resist, but not easy to keep because the fish from the Xingu need warm water with very high oxygen levels and Barry and sisters need to have loads of food to thrive in the aquarium. They are also the most gregarious plecos. Many of the other species are much more cryptic, spending most of their life in the horizontal or vertical crevices of the large boulders. If you shine a flashlight into one of the crevices, it is almost always occupied by a wide variety of fish. Here it's Hopley Ancestors Wolverine, and way back you can see the white and black body of Centromolchus Schulze. Way deep in this vertical crevice there are Ancestors Ranunculus. If you were looking for zebra plecos, they would be in the same type of crevice, way at the back, where it is just narrow enough for them to move around. More Hopley ancestors are under this huge boulder, alongside Sartor respectus. Both of these fish like to feed on the surface of the overhanging rock. For more Shingu content, check out the links in this description. While the small gold nuggets are rarely seen outside their crevice, the large adults will come out, even during the day, to feed on the biocover on the bedrock. In the lower Shingu, the adult Barry ancestors Shrancellus don't have any spots at all. They are just green with yellow edges on their fins. If you wait long enough, they will get used to the bubbles from the scuba and you can watch them rasp every area clean off algae. The family Loricaridae features huge diversity and one of my favorites are Hartia, which is rarely seen in the aquarium, despite the fact that there are more than 25 species. They prefer smaller rivers with pristine clear water and high flow. This group of Hartia occurs in one of the most clean rivers in the upper Araguaya. The rocks here have almost no algae on them, and the Hartia occur in huge numbers, then scurry off their rock when approached. As beautiful as that scene looked, it is even more impressive in Suriname, where Hartia guyanensis occur in huge numbers over bedrock that is covered in young river weed plants. The river weeds, or Podostomaceae, play a huge role in riophile fish communities, not only as food for many species, but also as a feeding ground where fish can find crustaceans and insect larvae. In this habitat, Hartia occupies the flat bedrock sheet just above the rapid, and hundreds of the green plecos sit at the edge of the strong current. The rock, young plants and interplay of light make for the ideal substrate where the plecos are hard to spot while they search for food between the rubbery leaves. The leaves have the same feel and look as the rubber flowered bath mats sold to prevent people from slipping in their tub. Some Monkhausia, Leporinus, Characidium and the occasional Guianacaura or Crinicicla are also found in this sector of the rapid. At the ledge, where current becomes so strong that even the Hartia cannot stay, an incredible bright green Paralitopsis lives in the larger leaves of the river weeds. The current here is too strong for cameras or snorkeling, so the only video I have of the Paralitopsis are taken in the aquarium. This must be one of the plecos from the strongest water flow I have encountered. Make sure to check out the videos in the other links to see more videos of fish in nature or some of the new species videos from around the world. Please subscribe and share and recommend this channel and stay tuned for more.